Alrighty. Let us begin. So I will call this um, regular meeting of the Public Site and Building Commission to order at 7.01. And please join me in the pledge. Flag is there. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, Invisible, the liberty and justice are wrong. Thank you. Any public input? Any correspondence since I saw you a couple hours ago? Okay, so we'll move along. Approval of meeting minutes. I will make a motion that we approve the meeting minutes from the regular meeting of September 27, 2020. Roy seconds. Does anybody have any questions, changes, comments on the minutes um, that you were sent? Everybody's good. We got a second already. Um, so, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I abstain. I don't know if anybody else has to. Yeah, yep, I think the other person would be Corvette and he's not here. But nobody else has to. Yeah, okay. So moving along into old business, uh, Municipal Center renovation in the GP room lobby. We have, um, Mark, I don't know if there's anything you have that's specific uh, other than the invoice or application for payment from uh, BMP. Oh, you're muted. <clears throat> I apologize for that, Mark Schweitz with Colliers. Yeah, the the invoice is all I got, um, and we kind of covered it last at the last meeting. We didn't have the uh, the signed copy, and it wasn't uh, distributed prior to the meeting, so it got pushed to this this week's uh, meeting. So, and I have the original that um, Jim brought over last week, so we should be good with that and then i'm assuming after this there'll be one more collier's invoice and that should be everything uh yeah i'll, I'll need to check with scott i i thought we provided the final billing so okay I, so, I will check with scott on that okay okay so before we get into the invoices anybody have any questions for mark etc we're good to go so I will make a motion that we approve application for payment number, what number? Five. Five from BMP, in the, and this is the retainage amount, in the amount of $8,282.05. I'll second. John Menti seconds. And the second page has all uh, information needed. Any comments? Just one question. You said we have one more invoice coming after this? Possibly a Collier's invoice, but Mark's going to check on that. This is final BMP. There's okay. zero to finish on this. Okay. This cool. is just the retainage amount. Mm -hmm. After the Collier, when that should close that yes. project out. Yep. Yes, and then I can do a final updated budget and hopefully take that to the board selectman and say, and we now put that towards the locker rooms. No. Okay, any other questions on this? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Done. Good. Thank you. And anything else for, for Mark before he heads off? Thank you, Mark, for all your help. Hopefully Thank we'll you. See you on the next project because we want to get going on that soon. Definitely. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Thank Mark. You. So, um, as I said, I, I just thought there would be a final uh, Collier's invoice, but we'll check on that. We'll be able to tell by the next meeting whether we have that or not. Then I can put together a final budget, check with Brad, make sure. I think we're still at least 50000 good to go that we haven't spent, so that's a good thing. So for the locker rooms, I did hear from... Janice in economic development that we did not get the steep grant. 
So, and that was something that came up, like she heard about it, put something together very quickly with help from Rachel, me, and a few other people. And what she found, and this is a good thing for us to know for future grants, that all of the towns that were awarded grants already had in place matching funds or some funds from the town to put towards the project. So they were given, right. you know, they were bumped up and given grant awards. We didn't have that in place. When I first heard about the grant from Janice, um, I happened to be here at the Industrial Center and ran into her in the hallway. And if, I think if we have known a little bit more, had more time, we might have put something different together, maybe gotten some input from Board of Select and Board of Finance on some funding. So that's a good thing to know. If that's how those grants work, we'll know in the future. The, the next step with the locker room renovations is um, we're going to have to meet with Peter Eckert, but first we need to meet with Rachel from Park and Rec, get input on how much of that area Part of the steep grant was we were only looking at a small area of the locker room rather than the whole thing. I think we need to look at the whole thing, but if there are other grant opportunities and we can do it in phases or do it in pieces, that would be great. We may not have that type of grant or a steep grant opportunity again until next year, I'm assuming. But we need to have all of everything ready to go. We need to have plans in place, etc. Even if we did break it into phases, two, three phases, we want to be ready to go with that. So I have to be in touch with Rachel about having, I don't think we need to have her come to a meeting. I think it's more like it's a couple of us get together with her, walk through the locker rooms. Are they still thinking of doing all the same things? Are they doing some th different things? Have they thought, just like when we started to put the plans together for the lobby and they came up with the idea of a family bathroom, which also became one of the handicapped bathrooms. So um, you know, they might have some other ideas since the last time we visited that. So, we'll, uh, but I don't know if you said, Roy, you might want to be a part of it, but some of the other, I don't know if anybody else would. The only thing I, I can, my opinion on that is, yeah. I think it would be smart to ask for everything and then you can always scale back. Oh, if definitely. You only ask for a little bit. No, we want to have yeah. the whole thing planned out. But if, let's say, a grant is available and we can do a section, or we just say we want to do the whole thing, but here's the money the town can put in. Definitely have all the plans ready to go, everything ready to go for whatever areas they want to work on. So, yeah, definitely. Okay. So, is there funding left over from the lobby? Yes. Closed out? Yep. And how much is that? About 50000 maybe. That could hopefully go towards um, Design. To this updating the plans. I know that um, we had looked at, Peter Eckert had given us, we, we actually have $20,000 all just kind of sitting there to go start plans. But it's not just um, architect skill, it's also structural and the MEP. Structural may not be as much as if we don't have to go jackhammering up the floor, because we don't need as many toilets as we did. Originally. So, doing all the we need the sprinklers and electrical plumbing, all that has to get upgraded. We have to start looking into that. How much is that going to cost? We did give some, get a cost from somebody maybe three years ago, so I'm sure it's changed. Have to look and see before we go asking for money again from boards like the board of finance. We need to know how much it's going to be. So you could, you could, if Peter Eckert doesn't do a, you can, we hire all the time, yeah. cost estimator. Right. He just yeah. takes the drawings. Right. Yes. Well, we're going to get drawings right. first. And then put a cost. No, I know. Yeah. But I'm saying a cost to update the plans first. Right. But then do a cost but, estimator, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. And then they can yeah. sell it. Yes. Yes. Because then we would have to see. Again, would the town want to jump into the whole thing at once or do it? Is, is it possible to even do it in phases? I don't know. We have to really look at it. 
Okay. Anything else on that? Any questions? Any? Yeah, we'll keep you posted. Uh, the high school HVAC upgrade. So we had a meeting, a special meeting on Friday that uh, lots of you were at. I was on, if you heard, it was really hard to hear. So, but I believe lots of questions were answered for people. And I, I see Roy has uh, plans here. I, I think he might have reviewed them. And so, our next step, we want to keep. So, Dr. Carver did send out an email earlier today with link to the shared drive. They clean that up, got rid of some stuff that's not pertinent anymore because there's updated plans, etc. So, that's available. And you're working on those are the plans you're going to use for the grant, all the information you're going to use to submit the grant application, correct? Yes, and it's what, what we're going to use to get the cost estimates. Okay. So we have existing cost estimates in the in the shared drive, so you right. you'll see that. Um, but if we want to make any modifications to the design or stuff, obviously you have to, to make those adjustments. But right. I shared on Friday for those that weren't there that we'll definitely uh, readjust it to include the owner's rep because mm -hmm. that is not there. Right. And we'll call out the commissioning. So that's a separate line. So they um, see that. Yes, and STD did um, give us a, a working budget. For what we should include for the commissioning portion of it, mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, sure. oh, sure. portion of it. Mm -hmm. um, and that I think I shared on Friday that I had to from Peter. Oh, um, right. the guy from uh, right. uh, yes, yes, right. Right. yes. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. thank yes. you. Yep. Um, and I had sent him when we were originally doing the work um, to get an estimate on commissioning a while ago. Right. So we're trying to compile all the information mm -hmm. um, in what we need. To do now is just to, to readjust the budget for this for the submission. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, it does. And so, who's doing that? Um, so, what will happen is um, first, uh, Jen will have to talk with Fuller Ronan because obviously we'll have to make um, an adjustment to the overall scope of the project to include the 83000 I believe um, it was for the owner's rep, mm -hmm. uh, for the budgeted amount for owner's rep. So, we'll have to look at the overall scope. Design to see how we can readjust the budget for that, mm -hmm. and then um, and then STV um, will work with them again um, to make those adjustments in the actual budget. That's our plan. Yes. So we just want to make sure that you're okay with us moving forward with that. So my question is though, since you're um, you're having to make some adjustments within that amount that was approved at referendum, are there pieces that? to take out of what's actually going we to happen or right. how's... we have we plan for some contingency but okay. i don't want to um take too much out of the contingency so i think it makes the most sense to just get a recommendation mm -hmm. yeah uh, on what aspect we get pulled back on and then i think there was about there were, i know there was a 10 10 percent contingency line there was like two and a half percent for escalation mm -hmm. you, you can probably put it up it's right in the folder but um, so we just want to talk them a little bit about yeah, because I can't hear my computer connected. <laughs> so I can. Kathy, you're not connected. I'm not connected. So she doesn't. Okay. Have, you could, so you <laughs> have to sign into the Zoom and just mute yourself, and you can I, put I it up. So, so if you look at the projected budget, mm -hmm. that's why I put it down. So I'm talking to myself. Kathy's email is my budget. <laughs> um, Hard to get in the way. <laughs> because you can't read anything mostly. Flash season. What do you think this is for? <laughs> do, do any of you like when you go to a restaurant, you got to turn your flashlight off? Because <laughs> I can't wear these walking around or I'll trip and fall. I have to just use them for finding another yeah, yeah. So, I mean I have do you have yeah, another? I have one that S T V prepared yeah. eleven twenty nine twenty twenty two. No, there's a newer one. That's the older one. There's a 
Kathy, do I have the ability to share your screen? Um, the Pena Global is right now. So you share your screen. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So just to orientate you, um, those are the most recent documents. So okay. any of the previous documents that we had regarding any aspect of the project, let me just minimize the, uh, we put in the archived documents. So they're there if you ever wanted to look at them. Right. All of the design materials are here. Okay. Everything that we're going to submit as part of the grant application is in this folder. Okay. And the cost estimate. Here they are. So if you look, this is the overall, and then underneath it is each of the categories has a breakout of the different costs that STD put together with Colorone and uh, it's a while ago, right, Jen? Mm -hmm. So if you look, what we were talking about is right now there's a 10% overall contingency. Mm -hmm. There was a 2.5% escalation. And um, did, we do bond, did we pay for bonding when we did the Rockwell and Johnson? Yeah. We did. Okay. I didn't pay for promotion, but we paid for bond. Yeah. Yeah, I think it usually has to be part of the project. And, uh, and maybe you can tell us. I'm not sure what like general conditions or Jen can tell us what that is, but it's kind of like contingency. Did you know if something is going to come up? Yeah. So. This is the breakup that STD put together. So the question really for Craig and it is within that, are we comfortable, you know, carving out part mm -hmm. of that $83,000 to a separate line? Right. Or do we have to scale back on a portion of the project to make okay. it work? Okay. Correct. It sounds like it's a little bit of a mix and match I think it's process. Yeah. Because one of the, I mean, that's, that's actually one of my concerns that I had even last Friday. This is really not going to go out for what year and a half, year, year and a half. I, I even question those numbers there. Absolutely, on contingencies. Yeah. yeah. Seeing where the market is now, two point five escalation. Yeah. Yeah. Right now. Well, and that's the conversation so we have to have. That's just it. Right. So the question. Really and I don't is, mind cutting some of it back, but it, it it'd be nice to know the whole scope. What do we cut? Yeah, yeah, without yeah. just all of a sudden arbitrarily just a hundred percent. And what we would do is we would work with STV and Kohler Ronan, come back to the committee because mm -hmm. again, I, I know I was saying it, it is a lot of work to apply for the grant. Yes. Um, but we know we have to come back and say, here's where we are now, given what the new information is regarding everything you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. So we know that has to happen. I just want to make sure we're okay to start having those conversations. <laughs> but along that same line, I know, I know there was some concerns from John on still some of the equipment. I don't like to bring it back up, but some of these items, I still think there's some room for some discussion with Cola Ronan, uh, which is really no different than kind of what we're doing, mixing and matching. If the project's not ready to be bid, Per se, I know we're pricing it. No, we, we have the, the documents right, ready it, to go. We have all the technical specs for the bid documents. I need to write the cover page with the procurement team. If I, 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 I totally understand that, but it still sounds like there's a lot of mixing and matching going on because we're going to be mixing and matching when we put these new estimates together. You know, so I think something's going to have to probably get cut based upon you know, and and maybe it's an ad add option at the end or whatever it might be so that we'll keep it as a separate category yeah. to see where, where we come out the price wise. Right. I, I don't disagree. So <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to build as much flexibility as possible. Right. Okay? I'm, I'm not trying to you know, make it more difficult. I just don't want to. I think so. I think what I hear you saying is that and, and again, I think it goes back to the question of we have to have that initial conversation with with because you're right. What has the equipment pricing changed? Yeah. Uh, you know, like what 
what's happened as a result of that. We know we're doing. We know we're doing other projects. We know what the what the what the right. costs are. So most manufacturers right now are have raised their costs twice in one year, which that's unheard of. Yeah. But that's what you're experiencing. We're right. going through a similar project right now, and our es escalation is seven point two. Yeah. I also think that um, it will be interesting to see because I don't think the state. I, I like. I think to add to what you're saying, so I'm agreeing with you, but. And I said this to DAS in our meeting the other night, or Friday morning. You're going to have 100 school districts across the state of Connecticut requesting equipment, trying to do projects, and you know, even take aside the escalation and the cost of it, the ability to actually get it done by 2025, which is when they want it done, is not going to happen. This is not going to happen. So we have to have those conversations yeah. um, with full of own and we have to work with STD. Right. And if we have to make adjustments, we have to make adjustments. I will tell you the worst areas in that list is the alternate one. That is where the highest temperatures are. So the math and English classrooms are the area of priority for us mm -hmm. in terms of like it it's where it's 95 degrees mm -hmm. on a on a, an afternoon. Right, right. With high humidity mm -hmm. <laughs> and no ventilation. So, right. so you, let me ask you so you this is good information. So you have a priority area, yeah. and you probably have a secondary. Right. Then... That would be alternate three. <laughs> okay. Which is the the world language classroom, which extends on the third floor around the corner. So that area would be the second priority. I mean, we know what the referendum is. We can't go over the four million one hundred eighty dollars. We can't. It's, yeah. it's already passed. We can't do that. Right. right. So we're. At, but you know, so it we, sounds like the scope of the project can move around. A it can. Bit. So it sounds, it sounds it like we should be okay. I think so. Just, and, and then what we might do, just to throw another idea out there, we might do alternate one, but then decide another area that's not air conditioned is our gym. Correct. And that's a much smaller modification. So maybe we can do the first column and, and another aspect of the school that maybe wasn't on the initial list. But but still still requires both the air conditioning and the ventilation for right. this. Right. So I think there is some flexibility. I guess I'm agreeing with you. The only, the only concern I have is that just say it was the one alternate that they really want to get done. Maybe our pricing is starting to get close or possibly over. I, I'd like to have uh, Colorona at least keep some of these items as add alternates or whatever it might be. So we get the pricing in. So that everything is there, we know we can do the project, but a couple of them that, that we might be able to throw out. Yeah, then we know we're going to have to because yeah. we but, know that it, that it, so that would happen. But, but I don't want to lose them though. Mm -hmm. for, right. I mean, they, they have to be in the project, so yeah. I want to price the project. Right, right, right. When at, when, when does this act, out when do you actually put this out to bid? So we wouldn't put it out to bid until actually the grant is accepted. Right. Well. We know there's a long lead time. We're discussing that. So there's a long lead time to bring in the equipment. So that the idea, we could put it out to bid even before we get the grant application, or that, that we can't the project approved. Right. But it would have to bid would have to be contingent upon the grant the actually the grant being yeah. approved, right, right, right. which would create a better timeline for it. Um, yeah. And we did that with um, the number one. AHX one. We actually bought the unit first, and now we're going out to bid for the installation of the unit mm -hmm. um, because it it's in. But it took like weeks. Yeah. It took a long time yeah. Yeah. So to I'm, get it in. <laughs> I'm going to make a suggestion to you. Yeah. And I'm going to follow it up with I'm going to be willing to share it with you. Oh, so yeah, can you believe that? Don't be so shocked. <laughs> I know you think I'm no, against you, but I'm not. No, no, I'm no, not no, no, I see it. What is it? Take a deep breath. So what we're finding is every manufacturer has a different lead on. Yeah. In the middle of this, what they're not sharing a lot of is we're in the process of switching over to three different refrigerants. It's, its nickname is a butane refrigerant because it is partially claimed. So all these factories are retooling for the new refrigerant. Okay. I built a spreadsheet and I built a spreadsheet of all the manufacturers. Yeah. 
you put it on the front end of your project, and that will require Cole Ronan to do this, is goes out to each manufacturer on what equipment that you need, who has the best lead time. So that could be York, it could be Carrier, it could be Dakin, you know, it could be Aon, you know. I'm gonna strongly suggest for you, there's nothing in it for me, but with that gives you, a, it gives you a, a menu to look at and say, okay, this is the cost of this unit and I can get it in 42 weeks. Yeah. Some equipment right now is running 55, 58 weeks. Some of it's running 30, but it changes every month. Yeah, I, I, yeah John is absolutely right. The lead times are absolutely incredible right now. That's great insider information. And then when the 100 districts is, are trying to get all the same equipment, right. it's, going yeah. to be, it's going to be way more expensive. So back, so my question to you is, Dr. Carver, did, did you not say that last week, correct me if I'm wrong, that you're not going to hear about the grant till the May. end of next year? Oh, uh, no, I'm sorry. They said March of 2024. So does that mean all the funds need to be committed by 2025 or spent by 2025? So that's impossible. No, I know. I, know. <laughs> I, I literally told them that. Yeah. Um, I thought that they said spent by December of 2025. You have the power of five, right? Okay, December of 2025. Okay. Yeah, but we'll that's back. only two summers. Yeah. <laughs> and and just the lead time for the equipment, in, in, I can't imagine what it's going to be what everybody's requesting. Yeah. So all the same time. <laughs> so John, are you finding that the lead time is changing with different men? Like absolutely. Two months later, this one's got to go, and then absolutely because what happens is five people go to them, they order equipment, then it goes from thirty-three weeks to forty-six weeks. <laughs> so then now another pair, one is better. <coughs> right. Than, okay. So we well, built a spreadsheet, and I, I, I actually did it because we have so much money committed yeah. that if we don't have it yeah. installed. December. Uh -huh. Invoice right. and a hundred percent. We don't have the money, and now and we, we have to fund it by ourselves. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. It, so it, now it breaks out the so, option. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is you're okay with us and maybe coming up with some alternates, but working with both uh, SDB and Quozone to see what some options are. I think that's in a more step. realistic um, escalation and. Uh, Oh, and I'll just point some of the numbers. If you go to the right about middle way up, our original cost estimate was in that three million dollar range for this work, and then we added over a million dollars to it in terms of escalation. Right, right. But that, but to be fair, that was done in November twenty twenty. Yeah. That's right. when I think you guys did it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been so a while. Like almost yeah. a year ago. Right. 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 Yeah. So, yeah. So we definitely, definitely need to relook at it, and mm -hmm. we know that. So I think you do need to do that. And come with work. So yeah. I mean, I I could you know easily get, put my head together with our estimating team. This will probably still be fairly fresh in their memories. We could very quickly just say, hey, it's a year out from this numbers. And, and your and team pop it also yeah. did for us separate from this committee the estimations for some of the other projects. So if we decide to swap in to stay in the report, yeah, then, I have base bid all to one. They're all four years. Yes. Yeah. So, so, all right, so that sounds like we're all in agreement. I think we need okay. to do that and then bring that to the next meeting yeah. so that we see from Colorona and from SDB some numbers and switching out, yeah. quit, switching out, not meaning different equipment, but if for the budget that we're working with, we have to do, like you said, the gym nice. instead of, right. I mean, that's not going to really be kind of written in stone, you say, so to speak, until it goes out to bit. And yes. we're not going to put it out to bid, or maybe we will a little bit for, but until we start seeing. Correct. If you have, I mean, what concerns me, if you, if you put it out to bid with a contingent upon. You're not going to get good bids. Bidders are going to say, why am I bothering wasting my time? Am I right? I mean, I don't know. Is that no, because so? that's where you rely on somebody doing a cost estimate. Yeah. There's companies we deal with, a half a dozen of them, that we take the plans, they take the plans. Yeah. And they break it down just like that. Which is what and they give you a cost. Yeah, we have a we have a completely separate cost yeah, estimate yeah. department. We have to use independence. We can't have right. the we call it five project. Right? So if we ask you to design a project, yeah. we can't really have yeah, you. We're not designing. So yeah, yeah, so yeah. 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 We're, yeah we're, we're not. We use independent. Yeah. And they did it for a scope of everything that has to happen at a high school eventually. So they they did do it for us. So so I, it's just a little bit of a revision. Right? I, I, 
I want to make a couple of suggestions because I reviewed the prints first and Roy came by and he picked up the prints and he reviewed them. Um, I, I think the number one thing for, for us, for you mainly is, there has to be a, a take that list of equipment and somehow break it up on your priority. Unless I missed it, I didn't see it. You know, like this is, uh, you know, like math is priority one, and that could be just highlighted on those color drawings. Yeah, no, we have that. That's prior we have it. Okay, so put it up though, but because I didn't see it. That's in the. I, I agree. That's kind of what I'm asking about now, so that we know which which yeah. ones we we want to take out. Right, and then the, if, the if most, we have to. Right, and then the most important one, because you're on a time frame. Um, I'm going to be straight up with you. I I didn't like the answer of Colin Ronan on the VRF. He said the VRF. He I said, what else did you compare it to for cooling for those classrooms? And he said a VAV system that is the most unpractical combination that you could do. You wouldn't, you would never do a retrofit on a VAV. We have 22 schools and we haven't done a single retrofit to VAV because it's the biggest amount of equipment to put above the ceiling. Um, I, I would much rather see and just speaking for myself, is the concept of running free online to every classroom is running chill water lines to every classroom. And that that was um, very similar to what we did at Rockwell. So we couldn't fit a VAV system in Rockwell and Josh and I went there. I don't know if Roy, you were with us too, right? With us. Uh, okay. Yeah, we measured above the ceiling and there wasn't room to do a VAV system like we did at the police station, but we compromised and we did a DOAS system and ran chill water lines to air handlers that are in the classrooms above the ceiling. At Rockwell. At Rockwell. Rockwell. Yeah. Yes. That's that's a that's a much better system. I was disappointed that I didn't hear that. And I'm going to say that to take it a step further, I, I think we have a lot of experience sitting at the table um, that we set up a time to go with Cole and Ronan and visit five classrooms for this other concept. I, I, we've offered that since last spring. <laughs> um, so you just need to let us know after school when you want to go, and we'll arrange it. And also, the high school ceilings are are not the same as some of our other buildings, so we have a lot of space constraints up there. So we have to work with it. So we're going to physically get a ladder, flashlights, measuring tapes, and we're going to look at the floor plan. And um, I I just suggested um, the last meeting that we have a subcommittee of three people, so it's not a quorum. And we take two shots at going there with Cole and Ronan after school. But you have, we have to do this. Like, really yeah. so just. Dr. Carver, I absolutely understand. You don't have to say it anymore. I, we get it. I, I, we absolutely get it. We, we've been told of that a lot of times. Yeah, it's true. We're gonna do it. We're gonna move as fast as we can. So who's gonna who's gonna do this with John? Corbett? I'm gonna ask Corbett. Corbett? You? I'll try. Okay. So. Yeah, no. All right. So you want to do? You want to take Jason? Can't take Corbett. Okay. Well, we have we have we don't know that. No, I know. Three people. Three people. Oh, I thought you said. I thought you said also you had no. I'm going to give you a detention. You're not listening. I am listening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I said three people, so it wouldn't be a quorum. There, there's when the priorities. Is, um, it's right in the document. <laughs> okay. When is um, Bob back? Bob is back on Monday. 
So do you guys think you can organize this <coughs> next week? Yeah. I would say yes. Yeah. And it might be you might be able to get John and not Craig, but John did a lot of the design work anyways. Yeah, okay. John's a Bethel resident, he has a computer system. Hey, can you also ask John on the uh we're talking a little bit about the energy rebates, what have you. Make sure that it, it, it seems like they're very light as far as their answers. And making sure, like a lot of the, uh, they, there's some, there were some simple devices to, that could get added on. So that would help the entire guy. So, so the scope of this project originally did not include any upgrades to the lighting system which is what john was mentioning last time no it's yeah, not no. upgrade to the lighting system you're talking about it's some sort of automation <coughs> and just tying the lights in with the automation yeah. control that's no what he said. you probably have lighting sensors that are in your classroom do you not you're right all you do is take that lighting sensor and they add what's called a relay pack to that sensor the sensor is probably 75 dollars and what they do is they take a set of those contacts and they run it to the energy management system so that when the building is occupied, if there's nobody in the room, they're at lunch or at recess, in the winter you go down two degrees, in the summer you go up two degrees. What that does is, heat, that was another disappointing thing about the energy. So my other question that's going to come up is we want to see a sequence of what they're doing for automation. Because what that does is that one little piece, he, he was talking about just doing a single sheet. That's easy. That's, that's, I would call that the homeowner sheet. What you want to do is you want to do a comprehensive energy project. We did it at the police station. We did it at Johnson. We did it at Barry. We did, we did it at every school. This, this, and this would be a, a perfect candidate because this is a mechanical renovation. This is, not really cosmetic, it's all mechanical. And and who that, could help you with this is ESC. They have an energy group. There's other people that do it. Yes. Would and another thing I would want to know, if we add that to the scope of the project, would the state would that be eligible for reimbursement? I would assume uh, so. Absolutely. I would assume it would be. No, it but, is. But, it is. We yeah. do it all the time. It is. Well, John, you don't apply for school construction grants to do it. And the question I have is, if if we had it, I'm not saying it's a bad idea, so don't misinterpret my like, question. It's, I'm not saying that. But my question is, because they were very, very specific in all of the meetings I attended about the grant, and I think you heard the same thing, it, the only thing they're going to reimburse is the actual installation of the systems. Right. They did not say no controls. Um, well, we have controls, right? So we already have controls, so that they're not. So we're not adding that to the scope of this project. My que my question would be: Is would that be reimbursable if we're going to put it into the budget um, mm -hmm. to do that? I don't know if it would be. We just would have to find out if it's if it's a component of it. Because they were very, very, very specific about what would be reimbursed and what wouldn't. Be. So is, would that be considered controls, which so, is not going to be reimbursable? That's so a good question to ask. So, just the mechanical system. Yes, so applications should address um, no areas where there's no mechanical system for heating, ventilation, air conditioning, which are things that these boards that don't have it. They also allow applications for limited mechanical capability for heating, ventilation, air conditioning, or other improvements in indoor air quality, which are actually kind of discouraged as the lowest priority for getting it. Yeah, and, and, it. and I gave examples, like I think I used this Friday, like if you had to cut into the ceiling, they would cut into the ceiling with the ventilators, they would reimburse that, but they wouldn't reimburse the replacement of like areas around that. I'm not saying that so, they wouldn't, yeah. but I'm just saying that I don't think it's a bad idea, but if we're putting it into the scope of the project, I'm not sure it's reimbursable. So can I give you an example? So somebody that somebody puts the energy project together, right? They take your automation system. That's why we want to see what what's in the project already, right? And they say, well, if we add this, this is a sidebar now with the utility. This is with EverSource. Not from not, you're not getting the money from the state. But 
you so they put out. So the energy people, before you even do anything, whoever does the energy engineering for you says, okay, we're going to charge you, I'm making up a number, we're going to charge you $8,500 to assemble a comprehensive energy project for you. They're going to take that energy engineering, they're going to give it to the utility. The utility is going to say, okay, it's going to take you a hundred thousand to do that, but you're going to save on your utility costs, on your gas and electric, and we're going to give you forty-eight thousand if you do it. So, the the scope of what they have on automation is important for us to see for you, so that some of that stuff right now they including and and CO two control is one of them. Demand-based ventilation is another. These are canned things that are already in your units that you're buying that you could get money from the utility. So it's a, it's like a two-part thing, and it's not really complicated at all. But I, I agree, it won't be it won't be reimbursed by the state, but the utility will give right. you that. Right, but, exactly. but I don't even yeah. think it matters for the purposes of the application of the grant. Well, I, th I think it matters only that we should be doing that with Coloronan or or whoever right now so that the right equipment a lot of times they need one extra sensor in the thing or whatever it might be so that we get the right the right units because then you won't get the rebate and a lot of times there's no extra cost right right but i, I guess i'm, I'm more confused than when i walk because <laughs> so when we we just had a conversation about moving forward with we're going to go through look at the priority areas which i just popped up for you and identify based on the designs as they are now um, with STB oh. and Coleronan to see if we can make any adjustments for the budget for the purposes of applying for the grant, correct? Yeah, and I think that next week, and next week, be a as an aside, yeah. you're yes. just gonna, if we can arrange it, you're gonna roll a little bit through the high school and then look to see if you can give them additional suggestions, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm okay with that. So who's going to be in touch with Color Run? You? Jack. You too? Okay. Me, Jack. And then you're going to let, in let, our, let everybody yeah. know just yeah. so that. And I will have Andor reach out to you tomorrow morning. Jack. To Trent tomorrow morning. <laughs> and we try. But could you wait till Evans finishes? And get our process started because yeah. I have no idea where we are. Contract lives between SDB yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the town and the Department of Education. We really need you. Right. Yeah. And we're not worried about getting that inked or anything like that. You know, we'll, we'll have them sit down and call them tomorrow if, okay. if that works out. Yeah. You know, we'll get along as quickly as well. And um, and then any additional suggestions you can give to call them in, which will include, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Just, <laughs> no, just on the suggestion to call them in, if they could reach out to uh, ESC. I think that's who we'd want to have them do this energy mm -hmm. audit now so that, you, you know, it, even though it's not part of the project, it is part of the project. Mm -hmm. well, let's let's, let's ask Kohler and yeah. what, they, what they already done so we're it's not. A, it it or, seemed like they were very, very light as far as I, what they've done. That was the impression. I, if I get involved in an official capacity, I could press them a little bit more. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Maybe, maybe so, learn a little bit. So what I'd like to see, and I don't know how it has to happen to keep within the rules, but like tomorrow there shouldn't be any reason why they can't just email us the scope of the automation. And I don't say it, I don't. Mean by that? And so do you have, it looks like you don't have the spec book there. So that no. spec looks like it was about 600 pages. It is 600 pages. Yeah. It is 600 yeah. pages. It's literally so, 600 yeah, pages. Yeah, so, so I, I think know. that that's where you, you'd find that you is in the spec book. Yeah. So, so wait. I want to back yeah, up, yeah. and I don't want to be disrespectful here, but here's what, where I'm getting the feeling already. It's 600 pages in the spec book. We got to go find it. So, uh, no, no, no. What I'm asking is, and I said this, express this, is we're volunteers here. There can't be a reason why somebody can't email Colin Ronan and say, send us the draft of the automation. We have to and pay we have for the services time. every time, John. What's that? They've already provided the information for us. 
And we had we 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 had a contract for them to do that work. They had completed that work. So, so if, John, what I, I could do for you is I could I could open up that spec book, find the actual section based on the spec number, and send you just those probably ten pages. Or tell them the pages, and we can look it up there. Do you give me permission to approach the SC and just have it for No, but the spec looks no. alive. <laughs> the SC oh, yeah. isn't, is, isn't part of it. No, he, he, that's what he said at the meeting, that they wrote the spec for the okay. control. So if they wrote the spec for the controls, it's, it's a in proprietary there. system. Yep. The only two people that could work on it is SNE or ESC. And we yeah. he's willing to get the pages for you. I guess why would I? Give you permission. Why do you need I permission? Can I get permission to go to Stanford? Sure. Come and, on. And, and come to the third in. floor of the government center. I'm on the west wing. Come on. No, you, you don't understand. We talked about this at the last but meeting. I, but you and have, we said that what, what, please let me finish. We said that he said himself. I said if we ask you for something, rather than us dig it, can we approach you and his exact words would say go so through Jen because I don't want to get five emails. Those are exact words. But you have the information. Where? Where do I have it? I it has been sent to you numerous times and it just drive. showed you where it is. Okay. okay. You have the information. I have I yeah. have the file you gave me with six hundred pages that it took me seven telephone calls to get it unlocked so that I could print the plans the last time. I'm not going through that again. So right, we're not talking I don't, about last time, okay? We're but, talking about right now. Right now, did, plans. Did he not oh, I that part of it? part of it. Yeah, but that's not six hundred. Yeah, so it's, it's not. not. It's not there. But it's on the shared drive. Evan is gonna let you know. What pages to look at so you can look at that part. That's what you want to do. Thank you. So we'll proceed with STD and Bull Run. Yes, and in getting together for a meeting. Right. Oh, but in the meantime, we'll work on the other things that we talked yes. about in terms of the yes. 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 And whoever's going to view all you. And Horvath hopefully can show up and meet and look at the spaces that you want to look at. Do you want to be a part of that too? Uh, it all depends on how we work out our time. Okay. I mean, hey, if we build in time for something like that, if you think it's useful, absolutely. Uh -huh. But right now, anything that's coming out right now, just, just to be clear, all the cost estimates and stuff, we have to pay out of our budget. This right. is not coming out of the project. Right. And we don't have unlimited resources to be able to do all that. Right. Work. Yep. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Any other questions? Anybody have any? Who's going to hang on to these? Somebody needs to. Much more give back. Or you can give them back to Jen, and she can keep them in the office so that they want them. Oh, okay. Right next we'll to keep more than our Very close to my heart. So, you know, so the next meeting, we're going to have more steps completed. And well, I think as we'll long forward. as we have that general direction, yes. yeah. we'll work yeah. on the cost estimates. Right. And, and it might not be the next meeting, it might be a couple meetings. It depends on how long it takes them to do the work that they have to do. But right, we'll but we're moving forward. With that. Yeah. Yes. Because you, yeah. you've got to keep working towards getting yeah. a grant in sooner sort of rather than, yeah. yeah. But make it complete mm -hmm. with all the information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Okay. Was that, was that, was that Johnson Rockwell in the agenda? Yeah. Does that have to be? Probably not. Okay. I did email the state today just to ask when you're cleaning up everything. So let's, hang on a second. If we're, if we're done with the HVAC, we'll move on to Johnson and Rockwell. Okay, so Johnson and Rockwell, do you have anything? well, just not just a little thing. Any um, audit? Any anything? Well, I emailed them today. The project's definitely closed out. Yeah, I emailed the uh, the office of school construction today to ask what the status of the audit was. 
and they they referred me to DAS um, to do so. I haven't heard back from them. Okay. But either way, that that process probably wouldn't involve you guys at all. No. So um, I think we're I think it could be six months. It could be a year before yeah. we audit it. I think we kind of still have to sort of we have it on our queue until you get your final reimbursement payment. Yeah. Well, it's actually the town. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it, it is kind of pertinent because. Uh, we did go over uh, on Rockwell School while monitoring the level spider on our feet this summer. Um, so that was outside the project. No, that's inside. It's still inside the project. It's inside mm -hmm. the project, but, not but it's outside the, um, yes, it's outside the office school. Correct. That right. was never included with the office circle school construction. Yeah. Okay. So, but our fee is still lumped in under that. But you must have given the SDE gave us a final invoice. Yes. Because okay. we couldn't have, we could have yeah. not submitted to the state yeah. unless you gave us a final sure. invoice. Sure. Sure. did that. Yes. Okay. So, so that would have to be worked out with the committee. So, so our COR, potential COR that we want to submit, that we talked about adding additional time for yes. the audit. Mm. I thought the audit kind of was being held out separate okay. and the audit okay. writer was being held at. Might need to check on that. Okay. So you're gonna have to. I think I misinterpreted one of the emails that you sent. Oh, okay. I, 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 that's that's my mistake. I'm sorry. I, I thought you said that it should be added on to that. As, so charge for the time that you had spent this summer on the level spreader, plus estimating any type of time we might have to spend on the audit. You shouldn't have to spend any time on the audit. Correct. Right. Or. And I did you might check with Geraldine on that, sure. or did she put a little section in there that was a couple of hours about the audit? I, no, I mean, we're we exhausted our fee. Yeah, no, I understand that, yeah, yeah. but if there's supposed to be this, you know, some part that SDV has to do with yeah. audit, then that's got to get spelled out. Yeah. I don't think we would have no, I don't see okay. other um, than you and me putting boxes in the back <laughs> end there. Um, we, 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 put, we, we closed out the high school a couple of years ago, and I don't think, I think this, even though I don't like the computer system that, that the office of construction has now, they have most of the information that they would have typically come out and looked at physically. So I don't know that there's going to be a lot of work for the audit. Yeah. Okay, so that, that makes my so life put, easier. Yeah, yeah, put something together if there's, yeah. if there's another change order to deal with, we'll do it at the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. So and so then on the on the level spreader, so um, did um, did uh, David go out and look at everything? David did go out and look at everything. He okay. was fine with it. However, Darren from SLR on returning to his office and comparing his pictures to the plans and specifications realized that the large you know, three and a half foot plastic pipe that's coming out of the detection bond, according to the plans, is supposed to be buried under no less than eight inches of dirt and kind of mounted to prevent any freezing that might happen during the winter. Thanks. So Good night. he Good night. Uh, was in contact with Sunburst, requesting them to do that for the contract documents. Um, and once he sends pictures of that, he'll then send the letter of substantial completion. Um, Pete said he's really busy trying to wrap up two projects, yeah. and he'll get to it hopefully by the end of the month. Okay. So we still have that 5% retainage, um, which I do not submit for tonight's meeting because okay. I figure that's what it's there for. So. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So are they going to have to bring materials in? So they're either going to do it on a Saturday or seven in the morning or whatever, because they know they can't do it. But at least they got the gates and everything. Right, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, so then once that's done, is he going to be okay with photos or is they yeah. have to go back up there? No, no, they're in front of photos. Okay. Yeah. All right, you'll keep us updated on that. I do have one invoice, I guess. Yes. Right? So the uh, Perkins Eastman one. Which is basically all SLR. I don't even think Perkins Eastman has anything in there. And this is not this. You checked this to make sure it was. Yeah. Because um, yeah. I didn't have anything to compare it to. 
Yeah, so the 726 is is what's new. Uh, on from this, SLR. From SLR. Okay. This next page here where you have this the out, there's an outstanding invoice. This is what we paid. The last time. Last they just time. haven't received it. Or they hadn't received it and they sent this out. Right. Okay. And this the Perkins Eastman ones, for whatever reason, go to um, Jen and Ian Carter. Not to me, not to you. Jen employers and me, and then I gotta send it to you. So I'll make a motion that we approve uh, Perkins Eastman invoice number 0068962.09.0-9 for Johnson extended for the month of September in the amount of $726. Sure. The Olson seconds, any questions? We'll probably have another one, number two from SLR. We get this? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I would hope that maybe an hour again for yeah. him to write the letter of substantial completion yeah. once he gets those photographs. Yeah. yeah. So there might be another invoice from them. Okay. And I think well, we don't have time to talk about that I'll write out since we so any anything on this, all in favor? Uh, I Aye. Opposed? Done. I think um Perkins Eastman also doesn't really have any time that we need to spend on the line. So we should, once we put all levels for everything, we should come to them. I could right, so put together the final budget for next. Okay, for next time. Yeah. Once we get all this in here. Yeah. Good, great. That would be, we're going to be asking, I'm sure. Okay. All right, so anything else on schools? We'll move on to the training range. And I, all I can say is, what's going on with the. <laughs> uh, so, um, John, you're lucky that your email has not been going through. Mm -hmm. uh, you would have seen all the emails that we've been having with Action Target. Um, <laughs> uh, they are, um, they finally got us last night. The updated plans for the pad for the MAU, showing you reusing the existing pad as is. And I went through the drawings and the specifications. According to my reading, everything said by ATI contractor. So I read that as Downs does not have anything that they would need to price or install to enable the delivery and install of the MAU. And the associated equipment. I sent that in an email this morning asking for confirmation from, uh, from David Johnson at Action Target. I have not heard back yet. Um, I will you know, continue hounding them to, to get these answers. Um, I'll also continue to. Uh, last Friday, we were able to get the comments from the Bethel Health Department regarding the permit. And they were really fairly generic. Um, so I'm not concerned about us being able to answer the questions. The only issue is that she will only accept the answers from Action Target because they are the subject matter experts. And again, getting stuff from action target is taking a long time. Say, can send it to her. Can you tell them what to say and then have them send it? So she so as part of uh uh David's email uh regarding the you know I, I asked him six things or so and he responded with uh that he had sent the specifications or sorry Rex John Rex Shields in his office had sent this response. But just to you. But it wasn't, wasn't to me. Oh. And uh, it, so he, he sent, he said, this is what Rex sent as a response previously. But I don't know who that went to. So I asked, did this go to Jen directly? Because it, cause I wasn't to CC'd Laura. on it. Or I'm sorry, to Jen, to, to Laura, Laura, yeah. Laura directly, because I wasn't CC'd on it. Right, right, right. And can you please make sure you copy me on everything? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That 
that you're corresponding. They've been doing that frequently, whether they either reply to one person or they reply to the wrong people. Right. Um, so, it, so again, uh, no response to that. So I don't know where that communication stands between the health department and Action Target, trying to get answers out of both parties is kind of like pulling teeth. Um, and uh, as far as the enabling work that uh, that Downs is doing, um, Kevin is on the line. Kevin, I hope you didn't fall asleep during our our earlier conversation. Well, I was uh, tentatively listening. Uh, it was very informative. Um, so an update on the uh, fit out work is um, so the electrical roughing is ongoing. Uh, fire protection, so the sprinkler lines, um, that work is, I'd say, like 70% complete. We have coordination that needs to happen once um, Action Target installs their ceiling baffles. Um, that's kind of the, the, the main work that we, we have in place so far. Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay, so, um, and they're just kind of doing stuff. Right, and per the commission's request, yeah. uh, I asked Action Target for a schedule of values to uh, correspond to their request for payment. Um, they sent back saying that their invoice was their schedule of values, which, Says to me, they don't know what a schedule of values is. Right. So I sent them an email, which Nancy and John were included on, showing an example schedule of values and what information we'd be looking for. And uh, yeah, as of close of business today, I had not seen anything from him uh, responding to that. Um, so they are standing by their invoice of $328,000 plus. Uh, that we reviewed last time and the commission uh, turned down payment on. Um, so I, I submitted it again for their, what they, they put in. And that's- uh, Was it October 16th? October 6th. 6th. And they- In the factory? It, it's in the yard right in Connecticut. Oh, good. But not on our side. Not on no, our, no. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, they had, we had requested them to do that for her. Right. And they are saying they will not deliver it on site until they receive payment. Even though it's not in their contract. Right. They have no terms of payment in the contract. Understood. Sort of being held hostage. Mm -hmm. Right. Is it? Is it? Kind of keep it. It is keeping us from moving forward. They, the emails I remember basically were saying. First of all, the the one that they sent, the numbers didn't jive. Right. So they did. They did fix that yeah. so that the numbers do jive between the line items. And they're basically saying that the third payment, which is three hundred twenty-eight thousand one hundred fifty-two dollars. Um, is the third payment for manufacturing and pre-shipment, and the re remaining ten percent, which is eighty-two thousand thirty-eight dollars, is their installation fee. And you said the equipment is in. It's in Connecticut. Yes. Okay. Okay. So. Did we have a we have a performance bond. We have no bond. I don't Any think so. Up? Not with Action Target. I don't believe we do. So they're not going to drop the thing unless we the the MAU unless we pay them, but. We're not going to schedule having them drop it in place until they answer your question about 
the pad. Well, it's more than that, though. Oh, it is, yeah. But yes. are they going to hold off on answering the question about the pad until we pay them? I, I mean, that would just be shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's good. So, so the, the unit's here, mm -hmm. but we, we still have the problem of this whereabouts. Uh, they said it's in the pit yard. So I've gotten uh, phone calls from a yard in Prospect. So I'm just, that's where my caller ID said it was for Prospect Connecticut. So I'm guessing that's where it is. But performance uh, mechanical at a Torrington is the one who's actually doing the install. So I, I don't it know if it's not there on the site. Or, if it was on the site, it would be a whole different situation. Right. Then we have a physical piece of equipment that is sitting in the police lockup that, that I could almost see myself saying, maybe we can work our way towards the goal. Mm -hmm. But when it's sitting on an unrelated property, we don't know if there's liens on it. We don't know. We have mm -hmm. no idea yeah. where, where this thing is. I, I'm totally uncomfortable. He said with, in the crane yard. So, so whatever that is. So here's an uh, Unless we had some legal you know, yeah. advice yeah. That, that writes it up such as that. I, I, so here, here's a just a concept is you tell action target set the unit on the pad the rigger set the unit on the pad right. behind the PD and then we come up as a committee once you do that we'll give you X amount of dollars you know obviously the 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 numbers they have here is it okay if I look at this um, so add the numbers they have here to to leave eighty two thousand because unfortunately yet yeah, yet yeah, you have to think that it hasn't gone smooth that yeah, since we started right? at all. So I say to myself, what's the realistic number to keep as retainage if you got to get somebody else to finish it because you don't have a bond? Because normally, if you if you had a performance bond. Right. If they didn't, if they, they just say you paid for the unit and they said, guess what? We didn't make any money on the job. We're not going to finish. It's yeah. happened more yeah. than you think. Well, but they then you it. call in their bond and the bonding company finishes your job, right? Right. That's kind of, but that, so there has to be a, uh, so what, what but that, payment terms did we agree to? There's there are none. Money. There were no terms none. of payment in the contract, match and target. However, subsequent to the contract being signed, and I'm starting to send invoices. They sent us their standard terms of uh, terms and conditions. Again, not included in the contract, but down the back of sent signed. But that standard term of conditions states that upon delivery of equipment, they are entitled to ninety percent of the project delivery. Right. And okay, delivery. Put it on our site. Yeah. Where we own the site. Yeah, but Roy, are you comfortable with the 90%? That, that's only leaving 10%. I, I'm still uncomfortable, but I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm okay. halfway comfortable with Yeah. And there's also, I'd like to see, you know, waivers of lien signed off, et cetera. Where, where you know, I, I'm the same thing. What's the balance of the work once the thing is 82, set? 82,000, I think. Well, no, no, no. What is the scope of the work? They won't, they won't do that, That's what we've requested is a schedule of value. No, no, the work. what I'm asking, because I'm Is installing with all it. the range equipment? And yeah, the MAU. A lot of work. That's what yeah, that's, yeah. that's, oh, yeah. that's all the work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We've paid them $410,090. $190. So, we owe them $410,190. So we've paid half, but we owe them half. So is there a number that I, I could counter offer that this committee would be comfortable with? So if I came back and said, we were willing to pay you up to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars left on your contract value, two hundred thousand. I don't know. I'm making up numbers here, but is there something so that I can counter off? And I would tell you, I know that I, I'm already thinking in my head the answer to that is. Yeah, unfortunately, for the stage that we're in, we have to give it to somebody, and and, and maybe it's maybe it's your firm, 
that says, okay, the unit's on the pad. Right. How much is it? What's the cost estimate to finish it? What's Here's what? the problem, though. The targets and everything, who are you going to get to finish it? Right. That's Only get access to the target. That's all, yeah, that's all proprietary. Yeah. So yeah. we couldn't, yeah, right. whatever programming, all the electronic, we don't Which is, here, here. if we had a schedule of values, we could call that out right. and say, here's the money we're going to give you. But we, but we also don't have a pad that it fits on, is that correct? So we do have, the, the equipment fits on the pad. And this redesign that they sent us uh, last night, uh, about six o'clock, um, so that's why it was not included in the stuff that I distributed yesterday. Uh, shows supports basically what I pitched to them, which is using concrete supports to support the branches of the ductwork that extend out past the pad. All the heavy equipment and curves themselves fit on the pad. Yeah. So it's basically ductwork so you got that it. has to have a support out here with an elbow or whatever. Which Instead they, of putting which a huge should pad own, right? If they could deliver the, the hardware that's in prospect and it would fit on the pad that we have. Yes, yeah, that was my that was my concern that it, we, I, I misunderstood what you had to do. Could we have them do that? And that might pay them some money? Yeah. I think that's the reason. Well, I don't think, I don't think you can pay them anything until the thing's on site. On, mm -hmm. Exactly. Because there was one email, I'd have to find it in my phone, where I believe it was either Rex or David Johnson, who was David Johnson, said the MAU is not worth X. Right. I, I had put out a number when I listed out the objections to the submitted invoice from last meeting. Right. I said, you know, these numbers were transposed, and one of the things was the MAU is worth $400,000, um, and, and we don't have an on site. And he came back and said, well, the MAU is actually only worth $373,000. Really missing the point. Yeah. Completely. Right. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It seems, it seems that we're, we're at least in a reasonable position at the task on the put it on the site. And, and we'll, at least I, I, I'd be comfortable going that route. Mm -hmm. I What's the number? The Put a price well, on it. With eighty-two thousand, you know, I'm, I'm I'm less concerned. You know, then at least we have the unit there. We can go over and we'll we'll soak it for for the rest of the work. At least we got the, the unit sitting on the pad. We'll put other people on the job, and they'll have to put the stuff together, and that's the way it will go. But we want the action target putting the range equipment. Absolutely, but by the same token, we got nothing now. Right. Right. Yep. It's got to be on our property. Yeah. I mean, it, it just it's simply got to be on our property. Yeah. And we have no valid argument for not paying the bill once it's here. Correct. Because we have no progress payments from it. Correct. Mm -hmm. We didn't negotiate in terms of payment. Right. Which is stupid. So who would have thought that? Pardon? Who would have thought that we would need to be that? Anyways. So. Half a million dollars. Don't we don't have terms. Yeah. Well, they don't have terms either. It's more than yeah. half a million dollars. We're the guys that have to pay the bills. Yes. So we're the ones that ought to understand what the terms are. That and our, our folks obviously. The problem didn't. is, though, is that we have a schedule that has to, you know, has to be met. We're already behind. Yeah. So. I mean, if they're holding up the project, then we're looking at a whole different, different circumstances. So they want how much down for a payment? Oh, it was three hundred and twenty-eight thousand and one hundred fifty-two dollars. So, if we offer them two hundred thousand dollars after they put it on the pad, would that be a fair number? If it's dropped on the pad, we'll give it two hundred thousand right now. And that will leave us what roughly two hundred to go. Yes. No, it would be it goes two hundred and eighty. Well, tell if he gives us a schedule of values, we can pay him as he goes. Yeah. Because we're going to have the same conversation in about yeah. the so you give them 60 days. Yeah. You're, you're right. Because this has to, you'll have 200 in the coffers. Um, right? Well, it's, it's no, you're going to yeah. take no, this right. number, deduct 200, so add 82 that, yeah. to yeah. 128. Okay. Yeah. 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 This, 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 this is the schedule of value. Per payment comes down. 
Yes. No. Yeah, I, I said to you and that. Yeah. Who said to you and you give us a schedule of value? Right. You have for example. And we'll give you the 200. Say that. All right. Say that to him. If you're not willing to prove that you're stacked from spec three. So we'll already we gave you 400, four hundred, didn't we? Oh, right, four times. Yeah, deliver the unit. Give us a schedule of values, and we'll give you two hundred. Right now. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I'm I am too. Yeah, deliver. It's so, a, yeah, so yeah. so say it's got to be on the pad. So, so say he says, "Fantastic! I can get a crane here Friday." You don't have another meeting for two weeks. We can call a special meeting. Just you think that's fair with your experience? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I think if they drop the pad and he gives me a schedule of values that says the the unit itself is worth two hundred fifty thousand dollars and the installation is one hundred and ten thousand dollars of that, I would be fine with giving him the two hundred fifty thousand dollars of the MAU actual cost because we now, like you said, Roy, we own it. It's on our side. But, but don't we all, isn't there enough more work to be done setting up the target to yeah. whatever yes. else? Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah, so yeah. I'm just talking about the, the yeah. NAU scope of the project. So yeah, it was about $430,000 was the total scope for the target rank, target equipment and install. And then the other 400 about was for the NAU and it, equipment and installation. So we schedule. already paid the first 400 though, right? Yeah, we're right. And we have all we have all the range equipment on site. It's just so not installed. It's gotta be installed and programmed and like you said proprietary. So right. all the work uh, the other associate associated work, sprinkler system, electrical is that's that's what Downs is doing. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty much yeah. at nearing completion. Yeah. Well yeah, I mean as Kevin said, you know, they 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 reach a point where they need to stop and allow action target to catch up so that the two can mesh. Gotcha. And I think the schedules of value should be on that letter. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I bet they offer a different number. Mm -hmm. consideration. So um so you got that. Now we approve change order number one, which I have signatures on, and I'm going to have to file a copy with the town clerk. You sent us change order proposal number three. Number three, yes. Where's number two? Number two again came in from Kevin later yesterday after the window to get stuff up. Okay. Um, so we're going to do, we, um, we can't, I, I had it, I, I had it, I just wasn't submitted before right, right, the meeting, so. Right. So, but you gave us three. Yes. Okay, so we can look at three. Yes. Is there anything else anybody needs? So we're good with what we're going to do with the MNU, you know, what we're going to happen with that. Yep. And, and as always, I'm going to start off by calling him. At his, uh, their office opens at yeah. 8 a.m. Utah time. So you call them. So in. I call them and I send an email that I, I copy you on mm -hmm. saying this is just a reiteration of my my voicemail. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm requesting. Please call me back. And when I don't hear back next day, I say request number two. And continue to bother them until. And you'll continue to see if you can have them about the building. Yes. Yeah. Because that's kind of holding back the parts of the permit. Right. I need to get moving on that. So the change order proposal, which is the um, metals, miscellaneous metals, because you argued back and forth with them about whether they were supposed to install that stuff or not, because they said yes, and then they said no. Right. So, right. Right. So, um, you know, and one of the reasons that we asked them was because you know, uh, uh, Downs found that that was uh, an expensive part of their, um, their 
what what they're getting for for pricing. So we would hope that we found we would find a economy of scale by having Action Target do that unit strut in addition to the unit strut that their mechanical installer has to install as well. Because they also do it on other jobs. Right. So, um, how, where does this put us so that change order is 43, does that include balance part? Yeah, 43,147.94. And is that, where does that put us with budget? That puts us with about $10,000 left in contingency, and uh, we still have not touched the balances contingency that they included in their payment pay, which was $8,000. How much? $8,000. So you $18,000. So I have a question, um, Kevin. So we've got change order proposal one that we approved. We're looking at this one tonight. At what point do you have to, don't you have to kind of put a couple of them together and Yes. Um, uh, so for uh, the month of October, I'll put together a GMP change order number one, okay. which will include the, the one that we approved last week for the fire alarm. And if this one is approved, it'll be included. Okay, because well, I'll have to also get that signed by the first selectman. Okay. So another question. So the one I have that you sent out, Evan, has no signatures on it. Yeah, uh, so I... I asked Mark Allen to, if he had any comments on it. I have not heard back, Kevin. Did you get anything back from Mark? No. So yeah, it, it's, it's, so it's, yeah it's gonna be the same thing that happened at the last one. Um, we're gonna have to, if we could agree to it as part of this commission and then uh, JAJ approves it and signs it, um, you know, we could have, uh, that then sent to you or to his office or however we want to do it. I, so I read I have it go through me. I mean, you can yeah. send them a copy, but because the last one, um, I have Dan's signature on and nobody else's, but then you sent all the electronic ones and I got everybody. What's the usual? I, I was the sequence that I'm accustomed to is the architect signs, the construction company signs, and then we as the owner sign the final one. It, it, it. it varies who has the final executing signature okay. between right. the client and okay. the, the contractor. Right. But yes, the architect is the first one to sign it. Okay. So it, it, even if we approve it tonight, it's going to need to get signed by both Kevin and, and Brian and or Mark, whoever does, oh, probably Brian because Name's not on that. Yeah, he requested that Brian's name right. be on it. And then you'll get it to me and I'll have the end yeah. okay. Excuse me, Evan, could yeah. you roll that down so I could read it? Um, thank you. Yeah, this is all stuff that got sent out. Um, I am going to make a, the motion so that we can keep discussing. So I will make a motion that we approve Downs Construction Company change order proposal number three for unit struts for the action target baffles, miscellaneous metals, etc. in the amount of $43,147.94. And I need a second, second to Roy second so we can keep discussing. And there's um, actually a couple extra pages too of the backup um, yeah, information. Still. Yeah. seem to make sense that Action Target would do all this since it's part of really what they need to install, but it was not specifically. So this change order is for $41,000. 43. 43. It's 41 for the um, steel tech, but then downs um, I, I just parts. I, I find this disturbing that something of a $43,000 $43, change order at this stage of the project already is it's kind of disturbing. So we actually discussed this during the GMP process. Yeah, we did. That we per Downs told us that they were getting very high numbers. Yes, I, I remember that. Right. And we, so we purposely asked Action Target to take over that scope of work 
because they we're open to get an economy of scale because they're already installing some Unistrup or the mechanical uh, supports of the trunk line in the in the range. Yeah, and they, they do it all the time. Right, and they agreed to do that. And then I was asking them repeatedly, and apparently I asked one too many times because then they just said, according to our contract documents, it's not part of our scope, we will not do that. So we were put under the gun. Uh, Downs went out to their low bidder from GMP process and tried to reconvert them to the number, and this is what we were able to get. Is it similar in what came back originally? Uh, Kevin, I think it went up 1500 Is that right? Yeah, so we included some costs for engineering. Stuck. I just think this is it's yeah. a, it's another another bad slope with this police station project we're heading down. I would I would not put it that way. I mean, uh, uh, we have to do it. I, I know and we do, but it, it's just uh, we'll see what happens. And they and it's specifically excluded out of their contract, but that's what holds their panels up. Yeah. It was not in their original. Uh, contract in action targets original contract and it was part of the whole bid packaging that um, downs put out but as i said there were several parts of the bidding that came back that were kind of ridiculous at the time. and which is kind of how we're in a way stuck with change orders but you know evan's been doing the best he can as far as Negotiating what's best for the town, which include getting action target involved, and they seemed to be enthusiastic about it initially, and then they weren't. So, you know, again, if we get to a point where we're over budget, I don't know who's going to go back to the town and ask for money because it, it's we're, not going to be pretty. We're not going to go back to the town and ask for money. So, so not not fully understanding what that scope is. How does that compare to when they bid it? Initially, he said yeah. it's fifteen hundred more. Than so it's so it's same. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sake of argument, it's the same number. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. From and after from Target two. never came back with a number. Right. Yeah. So the, all the times that they reassured me that yes, they were asking their guys to do numbers, never saw anything of it. So I don't know. Or I, I just don't. Know. Uh, yeah, we started that process in August, and they pulled the rug from underneath my feet you know, last week. So now I was able to put that together you know, quickly for us, so we can hopefully keep the project as well as the schedule. Get, this has to get going right, right, right away. Yeah. So it's well, got to pay, got to pay it. So, who did the plans? Yeah, did Chuck Hunsky. But he did he actually do the partition layout and everything? Yes. For this? Okay. Yes. We had a whole discussion about it because during sometime in the summer, July, um, Anthony was on saying that there they, people were coming back with, "Oh, you can't do that." Yeah. But no, I'm just concerned. And Brian got on and showed us that. to put a change order when action gets out there. No. It's the plans that after Action Target finished their plans, then Chukowski Hughes finished their plans. Okay. So, so they all buy in now. And then we approved Oops. them. Yep. And I signed. Just double checking again because I need to have to change. Yeah. Well, they. To change after we change it. <laughs> we shouldn't have to. I would be surprised if we did, but I would be really pissed if we did it. So. I'm never surprised anymore. I know. No. And announce. No. Nope. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Done. So, Kevin, we're going to need signatures and then um, from Brian Humes and then from you, and I'll get it to Dan Carter for his signature. Okay. I can uh, get that to you, over to you tomorrow. Yeah. And you can, um, I think you can just, with our approval, 
to be able to get going on that. Yep. Uh, yep. I will. Uh, I'll talk to the steel tech tomorrow and cut them loose. Okay. Good. What's this? Or is there more stuff we have to? Uh, well, it's the downs reposition. Yep. yep. So this is um, downs application for payment number one. So this is a copy. <laughs> is it okay? To, uh, I usually get the stamp to sign and give the finance. It, it, again, it's it's really up to your town. Okay. Uh, how, well, a I'll, lot of people are accepting yeah, electronic copies yeah. now. I'll put it in and we'll see if they're okay with it. Yeah. So I I guess we were making his own do it because they were putting these not not even not even a uh, stamp one. Back up. Nothing with backup and right. uh, so we were having some trouble with it. They made them give us the originals. Of course they could bring them over. These guys can't bring them over. All right, so I'll make a motion that we approve Downs application for payment number one for the police station training range for the period ending September 30, 2023, in the amount of $39,614.18. So this was sent out by Evan. All the backup stuff is was attached to what Evan sent out. So it's basically a couple of different contractors. I second the motion. John seconds. Any other questions, comments, issues? Done. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And sign that one. I put them in the piles that I have to. That's a good pile. And then, is that old or is it? It's training range through uh, August 25. Did you do that at the last meeting, or? There was a question on that. I thought we said we paid that one, or we weren't sure. I thought that we were all up to date on. Because basically, STV sends a paper copy, yeah. and then they email a copy. Yeah. So sometimes the paper copy shows up. It's, um, do you have it in the minutes there? They we approved one um, SCD invoice for two thousand nine hundred and twenty-four dollars, dated August eighteenth. This was this dated September fourteenth, and it was in the folder that we left. Yeah, I want to say that me. one came in like the day after the last meeting or something like that. And you don't get these. I could email them. Yeah, um, I thought so. Yeah. Because I get emailed them. You, me, and somebody else gets emailed them. Yeah. And then they send this paper copy, too. And yeah. sometimes one shows up first, sometimes another one shows up. Oh, cool. You said it was this 14th? Yeah, if you want it. Yeah. I assumed you had it because it was in the folder that Kathy left for me yeah. after the last meeting, but I wasn't here. Let me see what 14 is. Oh, it's not good. Right. They don't work there anymore. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, thank you very much. You can stay here. <laughs> but we didn't send it out, right? No. All right. So we'll do it the next one. Yeah. I'll, I'll email. I'll go in the morning. Anything else? It seems like um, Downs is keep a little bit of the stuff they need to do with the training range and nobody's. Downs, Downs is our, our metronome here. Yeah. They're, yeah. Mm -hmm. And ha have we gotten anything from Action Target on when their guys are going to show up and do what Kevin is saying? They've got to stop some stuff so that Action Target can do. Right. And then. And then Downs has more to do, and then Action Target has more to do. It's like back and forth, kind of. Or uh, I think that, and Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the order of operations is that uh, Downs will need to collaborate with Action Target to do the sprinkler of lighting while they're hanging the baffles 
Yeah, so like I said, all, all the rough in for the electrical is complete. So they have their whips and they can't install their light fixtures until the baffles are in place because the light fixtures get mounted to the baffles. So the next sequence would be to get this unistrut installed. That way, Action Target can come out and start to hang their ceiling components. Got it. Okay. But once you finish your, once you do that last part with the, uh, the lighting and sprinklers, everything from ceiling down is all action target that they would wrap up on their own correct that is correct and we uh, that's inside the range area we do have some ancillary stuff within the control room that's not really um you know there's no there's not much involvement with action target at that point the, most of the coordination with them is within the range itself okay. so action target using performance mechanical to install them make up area. Did they give us the action target gives a list of their contractors or you and have you been having at the need to do any more like OAC type meetings or are you just it's you and Kevin making sure things are moving along? Yeah so I because action I, target won't play. Right action target won't play. Um, but I'm hoping that now that we have had this discussion, we can only get the MAU unit landed based upon what we talked about this evening, that we can then resume the collaboration part because as Kevin is saying, they, they need to start working. Yeah, it. yeah. Okay. Anything else? from anybody else that we have to do. Kevin, I don't know if you've got anything you need from us. No, not this time. Uh, just the um, the building permit. I, I heard some talk about it earlier, but um, you know, as it stands, I don't know if we have an approved building permit yet, but uh, we have trades that are working without building permits. I've been pretty um, you know, open with that. I just don't want to get to a point where, you know. Yeah, so I, I did uh, approach Yes. yes. Uh, and he uh, knows that you're working there. He's okay that you're working there. He is not willing to give a temporary or a conditional permit for health department signs off. But we he's move also at the not, speed of government. He, but he's also not taking any exceptions to the fact that that's there. Yeah. I think it'd be fine, but I think we need to, as much as we can with Action Target, to do some kind of reply to Laura. Because she's, if they reply to you and you reply to her, she's not going to take it. So. Yeah, and, and again, like Which his, is, his response to me was that Rex had sent this, but I don't know who he sent it to. Well, I her. mean, that, that brings up the whole point of paying him. Yeah, and Rex may have sent it. Or he can't even respond. Yeah. Yeah. So find out what he sent and who he sent it to. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Very concerned. Like, where do you go? Where are you getting involved? Absolutely. I'm, I'm very concerned. Mm -hmm. This feedback is not, not good. I'm going to start making some immediately, immediate changes. How was the, uh, what was the resolution on having all the stuff delivered to the wrong area? Uh, Kevin, do uh, obviously you've been working in there, have they? Yeah, I mean, we've, I, I've tried my best to get uh, David to respond, but we just, I took the proactive approach and we brought down a pallet jack and one of our laborers just moved stuff around to allow us to work. So that's kind of what we're doing at this point. Uh, thank you. So, so yeah, I, no, absolutely. Basically, nothing so far seems to be very positive about no. this action target. Well, they made the equipment, they put all the equipment together and they had it ready to go and they delivered it to the wrong place. Well, they, they won't it, respond to a permit, right, they won't right. give oh, a yeah, schedule oh, yeah. of value. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. Not checking too many boxes.
Good. Make a motion, we adjourn. I think you the business. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Done. Shut it down, Kath. <laughs>